So, Tracy Smith. Yes. Lakeshore Children's Advocacy Center. Yes. We are coming up on 15 years. 15 years. I have been at the Children's Advocacy Center for 13 of those 15 years. What brought you in? What brought me What were you doing before that? Yeah, so I was um, a wraparound um, coordinator with another nonprofit. And that actually ended. Uh, I was, kiddo was young. I really wanted to kind of work part-time at that point. And so that contract ended with the nonprofit that I was with. Mm -hmm. And um, Beth Peplinski, shout out to Beth. Uh, she and the board at the time, they were actually starting kind of a steering committee and just had um, in March, ni March 19th of 2009 is our 15 year anniversary. So at that point, uh, Beth, you know, had reached out to me and um, had an interview and I started at, as the family advocate at, uh, it was Manistee County Child Advocacy Center at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, started advocacy uh, did uh, some of the prevention component we started the um, actually I started the training for stewards of children and um, we're, we're doing that today the stewards of children what's that so that is called it's uh, darkness to light stewards of children um, child sexual abuse prevention training so that's for adults to um, this episode is brought to you by the Ramsdale Regional Center for the Arts. You can find them online at www.ramsdaletheater.org. Or you can reach them by phone at 231-398-9770. Our friends over at the Ramsdale Regional Center for the Arts want to let you know about something that's going down on March 9th. It's their Irish night. And the event kicks off with the spirited tunes of the Black House Monks. Setting the perfect tone for a night filled with traditional medleys, and contemporary twists. As the spotlight intensifies, the main act takes center stage with the renowned Kennedy's Kitchen. Known for their captivating performances and soul-stirring Irish repertoire, Kennedy's Kitchen promises to deliver an unforgettable experience for all music enthusiasts. The music starts at 6 p.m., so check the website for the ticketing information. That's www.ramsdaletheater.com. Org. This episode is brought to you by Northern Spice Company, located at 378 River Street, Manistee, Michigan. You can contact them at 231-299-7492 or at spices at northernspiceco.com. Listen, listen, folks, are you the type of person that just grinds in the kitchen trying to make a top shelf culinary experience for your loved ones? You're in the kitchen trying to make the best meatloaf, the best pot of chili, the absolute best pot of goulash. Where are you getting your spices? That's what I want to know. Where are you getting your spices? You're going to put all that hard work into making something that is an absolute masterpiece for your family, but you're going to skimp on the spices? What? Look, if you're buying your spices at the supermarket, I'm sorry. I feel sorry for your family because what could have been an amazing meal didn't quite come out the way you wanted it to, did it? But if you shopped at Northern Spice Company in Manistee, <laughs> they make everything on site. They mix all their own spices. This stuff is absolutely, there's no added preservatives Nothing extra added in other than the spice. Hey, you don't know where your spices are coming from when you pick them up off the shelf at Walmart. There could be wood chips in there for all you know. Not from Northern Spice Company. These are their simple three. I put that shit on everything. Sea salt, fresh ground black pepper, fresh ground roasted garlic. One stop. Sprinkle that on. Mwah. They have a steak season called Manistee Steak Seasoning, a holy hamburger, the simple three like I already talked about, the pure maple sugar barbecue rub, the 1871 pork and poultry barbecue rub. I could go on and on. Hey, and don't skimp on the international seasonings either. No salt Italian seasoning. 
Saison seasoning, Italian seasoning with rosemary, and Greek seasoning. They also have a wide array of no salt choices, sauces, salsas, and syrups. Oh, but that's not all. They have one of the largest selections of teas in the county. Chamomile, Earl Grey, Peach Decaf, Italian Breakfast. You want chai tea? They got that too. Ever heard of mango black tea? <laughs> Neither have I. Spice Company's got it. How about a little Irish breakfast? They got that too. How about a little white chai? Yeah, it can keep going and going, folks. Northern Spice Company has all that you need to spice up your life and to warm yourself up with a little tea. Check them out, folks. Again, that's Northern Spice Company at 378 River Street, Manistee, Michigan. You can check them out at northernspiceco.com or you can contact them at 231-299-7492 or send them a little love letter at spices at northernspiceco.com. Spice up your life. Prevent, uh, recognize, and kind of look at some of the signs if there's a child that, you know, uh, has been sexually abused and how to go about, um, you know, reporting and, and that type of thing. Just seeing the signs, picking the signs, is that what the training is? Right. Well, and, you know, um, making sure that, you know, you're not in kind of one-on-one situations too. Um, so it's helpful, helpful for, uh, schools, you know, teaching staff. I'm actually doing a training tomorrow um, for the Mason County area. So it's, um, you know, basically kind of outreach to um, prevent prevent child sexual abuse from happening and letting adults know that um, it's, it's not a taboo subject anymore. Yeah, it's a hard subject. I mean, even every time I've, I've sat down with, with Megan and, and now you to talk about it, I get a little like, when you got kids... So talking about it, I can feel it's uncomfortable. My, yeah, I can feel it the heat kind of rising in me. You know, like ugh. Like I'll, I'll sit at the um, kitchen window and watch my daughter outside playing, and then if I go, like go in the other room, I'm like, because yeah, we're right. What's she doing? Yeah, where is she? Where is she? Right. Right. <laughs> Stuff like that. I start thinking about that all the time. Like, man. Ugh. Yeah. So you started two years into its inception. Yes. Could you do me a favor and, and kind of play back uh, how the Advocacy Center was created? Megan's talked about it with me a few times, but um, I'd love to hear it again. I know that there might be some people that are uh, listening or watching. Yeah, so uh, Beth was really instrumental. Um, she uh, you know, got a steering committee together, and um, you know, those were – it was a lot of community support at that time. So prosecuting attorney's office, um, she was part of Children's Protective Services at the time, retired. Um, the ISD was involved. Uh, so that steering committee got together and um, the Little River Casino Resort started their uh, July golf outing. And so we were a recipient of that money. So that was seed money uh, for the Manistee County Child Advocacy Center at the time. So with that seed money, uh, we they began, uh, you know, working toward uh, articles of incorporation, working on that nonprofit piece, and then uh, they ended up getting. Let me see. I think it was June of '09. Uh, started uh, rent at the Guardian Angels Parish Center. And so that was our first building. Um, And it was, you know, a great building at the time and kind of helped with um, the uh, technical piece with the forensic interviews. So we started that. Um, We did supervise visitation for a short time, but that didn't fit the Children's Advocacy Center model, uh, you know, when we, began that so um what else can i tell you i mean well i mean so like i i'm trying to think back on some of the conversations that like megan and i've had about this but so this was was this just a grassroots like we're going to build this thing or did or is 
I know that there's there's other advocacy centers in other communities. So yes. were you just piggybacking off of what they were doing? Or, um, or are you a part of like a, a, a larger uh, network that's connected? I mean, when you start a, a, a nonprofit, I, that tells me that this is specific for this, the, and you're not attached financially to any other organization, although you might you might lean on each other, but you guys are... Yes, we are a separate nonprofit, but with the Children's Advocacy Center model, right. So we're one of, I think there's 40 now in the state of Michigan and over 900 um, in the nation. Uh, we do go through a pretty rigorous... Uh, with the National Children's Alliance. So we're accredited, we're an accredited center, and we go through a lot of basically testing mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yep. and standards that they want us to specifically have and, you know, with our protocols and things like that to follow, um, you know, the standards of um, an accredited center. Mm -hmm. So I actually, um, with the help of uh, Traverse Bay Children's Advocacy Center and, um, a lot of the other um, children's advocacy centers at the time. Back in 2015, we had our first accreditation um, uh, approval <laughs> back in January 15. And um, so we've had, uh, we had one in 2020, and then we'll go through that uh, third reaccreditation re -accreditation process uh, next year in 2025. So when Beth started developing this, she basically saw that there was this model out there mm -hmm. and was like, well, we, we need something like that for Manistee. Yes. And then just started putting all the pieces together Parts to pieces. develop. And it really did start really small. Yes. And you guys got a really nice um, setup now uh, okay. compared to probably when you started. Me too. And your connections with, you know, working with uh, the police departments and with... Um, Children's Protective Services. Child Protective right. Services. Yeah. That all comes together. Yes. So when Absolutely. it starts, how does how does how does it start with? All right, we need to talk to this child. Like, what are the steps? Somebody has said something to the police department. Sure. Yeah. When there's an allegation of um, child sexual abuse or severe physical, um, that we we need it reported mm -hmm. to either local law enforcement agency or to Children's Protective Services to their centralized intake line. Um, that's all on our website. So um, when that allegation comes in then, uh, we'll either get the referral from that law local law enforcement agency or from Children's Protective Services. Being in a small community, how many times does the mm -hmm. phone ring and it's not through the proper chain? It's got to it be happens difficult. happens several times. I'm yes, sure it does. It does. And, you know, we... This episode is brought to you by Brandon Ball, broker owner of Dwelling Realty, Keller Williams, Northern Michigan. Are you looking to sell your home? Then look no further. When you list your home with Brandon Ball, you'll get a trusted advisor who will guide you through the entire selling process. With extensive knowledge of the local market, he'll help price your home competitively to attract the right buyers. And with proven marketed strategies... Your home will be seen by the most qualified of buyers. With 17 years in the business, you'll have someone experienced who's on your side. Contact Brandon today to get started selling your home. 231-690-4981. That's 231-690-4981. Or Brandon at DwellingRealty.com. This episode is brought to you by Just Clean, Manistee's premier car wash located at 146 Cleveland Street or just north of the US 31 Bridge. Choose their ultimate car wash, folks. That's what I always do because I can't stand my truck being dirty. And the ultimate car wash is the best. It includes a triple foam conditioner, ceramic coating plus wax, and a 60-second heated blow dry. Get in, get out, get looking fly. Get the dirt and dust and grime off your vehicle. Choose Just Clean Car Wash of Manistee. I listen you know, mm -hmm. and um, we just have to make sure it's reported through the proper channels. It's really hard to, you know, <sighs> to tell a, a caregiver that, but um, it, it has to be, there has to be a report and we have to have the team there. That's, you know, that's our model and that's what we're there for. So can you talk about the, um, the, the forensic side of it, mm -hmm. the 
um, the interview process, uh, right. you know, how, how, how that works, um, how do you protect the child, uh, keep, keeping them, making them feel safe and comfortable and, and uh, giving them that opportunity to tell their side. Right. So we have uh, six contractual interviewers. Uh, each of them have full-time jobs as well. So uh, we kind of use it as needed basis. We have a calendar to kind of see who is available at the time. And it's helpful uh, when we have that referral from, from law enforcement, Children's Protective Services, that they get the information ahead of time so we know which interviewer might be more appropriate for a child. Okay. If that child has, you know, um, is on the autism spectrum or an intellectual disability, we want to make sure that that child's talking to the um, the right interviewer that knows how to talk, you know, with mm -hmm. that child and, and get the information they need. How are they trained? Like, where does that come from? Like So, right, they go through at least a three-day training with our Prosecuting Attorneys Association of Michigan. Um, very specific to, you know, talking with kids. Um, so they have to go through at least, I think it's 40 hours of training um, to be able to talk with kids in a specific way, asking, you know, the right things and going through a specific mm -hmm. protoc protocol. And then this is all over, this is all overseen um, by law enforcement, the actual interview. Correct. We have an observation area uh, and that's, it's, it's video recorded and that way the child, you know, can make a disclosure once and that can be used in, in court, court proceedings. Yeah. Now when did, when did it develop into it, how, how many rooms do you have? Just the one? You have the one interview? We have the one interview room, right? So when you started at, where'd you say? At the, oh gosh, at Guardian Angel. At Guardian Angels. Mm -hmm. Clearly didn't have a room like that. We had kind of a room within a room, and we did have a two-way mirror, but we also had that video monitor so they could um, watch that on the other side. Technology's uh, changed a lot since the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, all of your income comes from grants and donations right there's no right. um you you're not making money off of this so no. you need the grant money you need the donations coming through and as we you know come up on your 15th year um that's this month march march yes um you know what can you tell people how they can help financially Right, so uh, if you check out our website, mm -hmm. um, that would be great. Uh, we, you know, seek all types of donations. Um, we have the uh, PayPal, I think the PayPal account um, to connect there. Uh, we provide snacks and water for our kiddos when they're um, in for a forensic interview. Um, and not only that, we provide um, mental health the mental health component so we provide therapy um, trauma focused therapy for our kids um, and our non-offending caregivers when the caregivers come in um, they also you know need some support or for siblings and that type of thing yeah talk about the um, the psychological support um, mm -hmm. that they that they receive now is this is this happening you know congruent with the interview is there somebody there from like community mental health or it's there to support the child when they're going through this interview process. Right. So sometimes those kiddos are, you know, seeking counseling ahead of time. Um, but many times, you know, the kids are not in, a, you know, a therapy and counseling setting at that point. So we do make referrals um, either to West Michigan Community Mental Health for our Mason County uh, families or with um, Central Wellness Network. And um, we also have a private uh, therapist, uh, Jess. She's been awesome with both of our um, counties. So we have uh, rooms in each of the offices uh, specifically for, for trauma-focused therapy. And we provide it at no cost. Um, all of our services are provided at, provided at no cost to our families. And what are the steps if uh, you got to take a child out of a home? Oh, gosh. I mean, as uh, far as, like, 
where do they go? I mean, obviously you don't want to get too specific, but like, is there foster families that will help step in or are, are there facilities that, you know, that they can go until it's all kind of sorted? Right. So when a child makes that disclosure and uh, we hope that CPS is is there, usually it's, it's a joint investigation, so CPS is there. Uh, but we will call, you know, CPS, law enforcement will be there. Uh, we, you know, there has been one occasion that uh, we, you know, had to wait for a foster family to become available. Um, and it took a few hours, but we, you know, stayed calm and, and made sure that child was, you know, You said it took a few hours. I was thinking you were going to say it took a few days. No, no, no. No, um, there... Yeah, Children's Protective Services is pretty quick about, yeah. you know, finding finding a home. But there was, you know, one instance a few years ago, um, you know, in my time that uh, we had to find, um, you know, other other care and, and another home for that child. So we uh, made sure that was, you know, ready to go. How do you do through this process? Oh, a lot of self-care. Yeah, um, talk about that. And I've found especially now with after you know all the pandemic stuff um yeah i have to make sure that i get at least 30 minutes of self-care a day um before my day starts so otherwise i'm yeah <laughs> yeah you're it takes a special person to do what you do and you've been doing it for a very long time so i applaud you for that yeah thank you <laughs> So what do you got in your notes here? Is there is there what is there anything big coming up? Or anything that we need to talk about for uh, the 15 year anniversary? Yeah, um, I mean just our anniversary. It's I can't believe it's been 15 years already. Um, we've had a lot of changes. A lot of um, I'm not one for change, but it's been awesome to see all the changes and the impact that we've had on the community and and the support we've had from the community from from the inception, um, you know, from the creation and establishment of establishing um, this Children's Advocacy Center. Um, you know, from, you know, initially in Guardian Angels Parish Center, and then um, we actually, we moved to the um, daycare uh, next gen. We were um, kind of in the building behind that, or well, in the building, but mm -hmm. had it kind of tucked away. So it was a little more private when kids came in. And, um, yeah, then we're in a great space right now um, in a county-owned building. Um, so they, you know, provide our um, assistance with snow removal and, and things like that. Uh, it's been it's been awesome. Yeah, I think it's important to note that that the community – coming together to help support this organization uh you know it, it's a really hard organization to promote in right. because of the topic mm -hmm. and you know the more that we can do things like this or um you know include you in other events that can help fundraise or at least shed a light on the advocacy center i think is super important I don't think people understand the how important your organization is. I mean, God forbid that I know any child that has to go through something like this. I, I know that how I would I would feel, but knowing that you guys are there to help, um, you know, kind of nav navigate those muddy waters with that child uh, is amazing. And there are communities out here that don't have any. You know, there's CPS in all communities. There's yes. law enforcement in all communities. But having that that lighter touch mm -hmm. to, uh, I just, I can't express enough how important it is. I, how terrifying must it be? I don't know. How terrifying must it be for a kid to have to go through some kind of trauma like that uh, and just have somebody with a badge standing in front of them trying to get information out of them or uh, somebody who's untrained to try to talk to them and how uncomfortable that must feel and how scary that must be. So to have the, uh, the kid gloves, so to speak, um, which is what you guys definitely have, um, is, is really, really amazing. And I, I can't emphasize enough that if, um, 
if anybody's out there listening or watching this, uh, a donation, just go to uh, manistycac.com and uh, you can donate right there, right away, or you can, you know, get involved with them. I mean, I'm sure that there's some volunteering things. Oh, one of the things I wanted to talk about too that we did, yeah. didn't touch on a whole lot the last time I talked with uh, Megan was um because on your website they do have uh, some resources like the 10 signs of child abuse and a guide for families and caregivers if you want to talk about that real quick um and kind of what that what that means um you know it's it's an easy training to just kind of review that and you know go over that so that you can see some of these signs when you're out and about when you're at school when you're engaging with um kids in the community um you also have a group of like young adults that volunteer or work with the program? Yes. So a few years ago, um, when Megan came on board, uh, she started some, uh, Youth Ambassadors. Youth Ambassadors. So they are awesome. <laughs> um, they help us out tremendously, especially when we're running low on, you know, like our caregiver packets or our, you know, intake folders. Um, they help uh, tremendously with some of our fundraising events around the pier. Um, if you see them at the, you know, um, they provide the water, yeah. <laughs> uh, the water table. Uh, and yeah, they've been just great. They also help out. Um, so we have, I think, two representatives from each of the counties within the county, um, the schools. And we have uh, Child Abuse Prevention Month coming up in April. So they you know, make sure that the pinwheels are out at the schools, uh, you know, all of the awareness information is out there um, because of the, because of our, our kiddos out there um, representing as youth ambassadors. It's awesome. Yeah, they do yeah. a good job. And that's, that's a, a, that's a really interesting thing that, to try to bring together these young, these young adults into this. But um, how you, you brought up COVID briefly, mm -hmm. but how, how is it, how is the, how has it changed since COVID going through COVID coming out of it? Uh, you know, I know that that was a scary time. I, right. when I talked, I keep bringing up Megan cause we've talked a few times on this, but like when I said, Oh, it must've been pretty quiet during COVID and you know, ignorantly I was like, well, it's probably a pretty good thing. Like the phone's not ringing, but in reality it was a bad thing because yeah, those kids were home with, you need the school right. really. You need yes. the school. Because that's where it's seen more. Yeah. Yeah. So kids were home with, you know, their abusers. Mm. And then September came around and we saw a, you know, tremendous spike and in increase in, in those um, phone calls because kids are back at school. And yeah, teachers are our number one reporter um, because they're mandated reporters. I mean, early, I feel like all adults are mandated reporters or should be. And, you know, really, I guess, you know, kind of looking for signs and things like that. And for, you know, families, trust your gut. If you, you know, see something, if you feel like a, you know, child is just has, you know, has some abnormal behaviors and they're just not, you know, not okay. Um, make a phone call. Call centralized intake. Call your local law enforcement enforcement agency. We need that report, and then um, you know we can get our team together and and make sure that child's safe. Have you seen any since COVID? I mean, have you seen like a bigger uptick in the amount of abuse? I, I mean, I, mean our, I feel like I'm sorry for cutting you off. Oh no, I feel like that there is an uptick in like drug abuse in this community. Uh, I see a lot of, a lot of humans dealing with mental health issues in, in an unhealthy way. Yeah. And it's definitely more than it's been in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've lived here my whole life. So, I mean, I've said this a lot on the podcast, but it's more, it's, there's more, drug abuse there's more homeless there's more mental health mm -hmm. um associated with the homeless population here too right. and not to steer this into like a homeless thing but when i see things like uh the 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 rise in um uh, mental health 
issues and drug abuse, I think that that would kind of parallel some of the um, sexual and physical and mental abuse that happens to children. Right. I mean, COVID was stressful. We were all at home. I mean, not that I really mind that right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was a stressful time. I feel like maybe, you know, teens, I mean, everybody was really kind of into social media at that point. And even now, I, you know, feel like coming out of the pandemic, uh, things are still stressful. Um, you know, we had um, you know, assistance at, at some point for, for families. And now that's gone away. So now what are they doing? Um, so yeah, just tough times. Yeah. 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 It's definitely rough out there. Well, I think we'll put it to, uh, anybody who's listening, I'm going to hit this drum one more time. Uh, just go to manistcac.com and hit that donate button and help this, this organization out. Um, any amount, goes a very long ways so um do what you can there and then keep an eye out in the community i know that there, are there other events besides some of the events that like um that my team would put together to kind of help you guys but i know that it, it, at one point you guys were doing like the little duck race thing but i know that that kind of went away but the, is there anything else that you're attached to that we can say today like hey keep an eye out for this event because it's a really good fundraiser for the organization oh gosh um, I don't know if we have anything in the works right now, but I mean, check for pinwheels in April. That's always, you know, our, our big awareness and, you know, most of the schools get involved. Kids like pajama days. So yes, yes they, they do uh, like pajama, pajama yeah, days. <laughs> so, um, you know, most of the county schools get involved in that. Um, and, you know, kids, you know, donate a dollar to wear pajamas. And so we, you know love to see that and yeah be looking for pinwheels and um we just we are so grateful for all the communities community support that we've had um over the last 15 years it's it's incredible i'm going to do something with the pinwheel thing so let's let's talk about that after the podcast or maybe in the, over the next sure. couple of days i'd like to jump on that and see if we can make something a little bit more impactful because the pinwheel is just more of a uh it's like a reminder of what can you just talk about the pinwheel deal? Yeah, so um, the pinwheel is just a reminder that kids should have happy and healthy childhoods, and we want that for for all children. Um, we see, you know, kids between ages three and eighteen, but um, yeah, we love to just have that as um, awareness in April, um, and you know, our our kids love it uh, too. We have some little like. Uh, flower arrangements of pinwheels and uh, in the offices and so they love to take a pinwheel with them on the way out just to, yeah it's a good yeah. way to kind of promote the advocacy center and what mm -hmm. you guys do so and it's and it does shine a light uh i'm i'm familiar with the month i, I you're always like hey are you ready for some pinwheels <laughs> yes i am so but this year i think we should try to do something that um to not only shows awareness but uh helps throw a little throw some dollars into the coffers so yeah, we we'll figure something out okay. now that i'm thinking about it we'll get on it great thanks for coming okay. on today you're All awesome right. happy anniversary thank you. thank you yeah you're welcome appreciate it <laughs>